my question is uh, that how can this how can we sustain the notion that uh, human rights are fundamental and can explain it to people who are not in acad academic ac academia uh, or in an environment where the illiteracy is high? Okay, well, for, number one, I don't think they're fundamental. I don't think they're fundamental. And <clears throat> I, I do think uh, that they do provide, they can provide protections. And of course, their rights against the state, and they can be more or less effective. But uh, just to give you one example, in Britain, if you ask a person on the street, have you heard of the European Convention on Human Rights and the Court of Human Rights? They will say, yes, it's part of the EU, they will tell you. And the EU is our enemy, and we've left it. When you try to explain, actually, the Council of Europe was before the EU, and the European Convention on Human Rights has 47 countries, and the EU has 27, now that Britain's left, most people haven't a clue in Britain what it is or what it's for let alone the philosophy, let alone the philosophy. In Russia, on the other hand, everybody knows what it is. Everybody. Reason being that every lawyer in Russia says to their client, really sorry we lost. Next stage, we're going to the European Court of Human Rights. And so the court is getting a huge number of cases from Russians. And Russians know that it is the only court higher than the Russian courts and that many Russians have won. And by the way, I said I took cases on behalf of Chechens, and the Russians did dreadful things in Chechnya, much worse than has happened with the Kurds in Turkey, much, much worse. And actually, the Chechen clients I represented, they were not interested in money, not at all. It's the last thing they were interested in. What they were interested in was getting the truth of what had happened to them, in a form where the government in Russia could not disagree. And so in 2005, we got the first six judgments against Russia on behalf of Chechen clients. And the judgments are excellent. And actually they name Russian generals who committed war crimes. Now the court can't deal with individual war crimes, but it names them and says what it, the evidence is. And we had the judgments printed in many thousands of copies, which went all over Russia. And it was so important for the, Ch and these were Chechens whose children were murdered by the Russian forces and that kind of thing. And for them to have the truth of what had happened to them, as they know it, from the highest court in Europe, was really, really important. So if anyone asks me, what is the point of all this? Well, I said, that's the point, actually. And I, in Turkey also, with the village destruction cases, uh, my case, like Ipek, where the guy, he was just a shepherd in a village high up in the mountains. He had 10 children. By the time we had our case in Ankara, because we, we had an oral hearing in Ankara at the Supreme Court, horrible building. But, uh, and so uh, the, the library in the Supreme Court in Ankara became the European Court of Human Rights. And we had a fact-finding hearing. By the time of the hearing, this guy had one child left and two of them had been taken away by the Turkish army, never to be seen again. At the time, his village was burnt down. I think that was worth doing, see? Wouldn't change the world, but I think it's, I'm very glad that there was that opportunity. Uh, for, so, you know, it's not, uh, as I say again, it doesn't bring about democracy and freedom, but I think it is worth doing. Hope that answers the question kind of. 